Yo, what is up, you guys? We're back with some more The Song of Saya. So this is episode two of this game. So last time, you know, we were um, messing it with the uh, thing. I don't know what it is yet. Not confirmed if it's like a kid. I don't, I don't know. It's still a mystery. I don't know. Because it has furs and ears and stuff. And it's just like, looks like a little fur thingy or whatever it is. I don't know. Also, we were a dick to, um, to a girl. Uh, her name was Yo, which was... You know, very terrible uh, guy, you know, F Funery is uh, kind of an asshole, <laughs> from my perspective at least. I feel awful, miserable, but also refreshed. I finally crossed the line. I knew it would come crashing down like this sooner or later. Having become unable to feel anything about, uh, having, having become unable to feel anything but disgust for other people. There was no way I could hope to maintain the relationships I had before the accident. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. If I was in his situation, I wouldn't be able to keep the relationships either. Like, how do you even look at someone the same? Especially when they look like all alien and like, just not even human. Today's incident will definitely get back to Koji and Omi, and everyone will be convinced. I've had a major change of character. Honestly, I don't care anymore. At least I probably won't be committed for this. I just need to avoid acting any stranger than I already have. If this puts a rift between me and the others, good. The thought of all the stress I'll avoid brings a smile to my lips. I'm fed up with them, sticking their noses into my life. It's like they don't care that they make my gut turn just by being near me. I mean, they don't even realize it too. And you're not even telling them what's going on. So that's like, that's kind of your fault a little bit not gonna lie <laughs> i mean i wouldn't feel bad either like let's be honest like come on now i've been terrified of them until now but today i struck fear into one of them in that tent and that in that sense it's something of a relief but i'm not entirely without remorse for what happened the person i just demolished with the verbal equivalent of a nuclear bomb used to be my friend yo even if my senses don't believe it my mind accepts the theory i don't have any particular grudge against yo herself and i didn't want to hurt her damn in retrospect perhaps i should have just ignored her outright yeah it probably would have been for the best Yo was an attractive girl. I certainly didn't think badly of her. To be honest though, I was annoyed when Koji and Omi tried to stick us together. It felt like they were using us as entertainment and Yo seemed totally oblivious to the fact she was dancing to their tune. Her cluelessness was irritating. Mm. Or maybe she just liked you a whole lot, man. I don't know. Maybe that's a thought. <laughs> Still, I knew that none of them meant any harm. Back then, I didn't have any reason to hurt others just to get in my way. If having a casual relationship with Yo would keep our circle of friends together, I was willing to make that compromise. Yeah, damn. It's, this is tragic though, because like he really doesn't have any friends anymore. <laughs> now, however, there is no room in my heart for such forbearance. Okay. I don't know what that means. If merely talking to someone is an ordeal, then how can I ex be expected to show them kindness? These ruminations have left me exhausted. I want to return to Saya as soon as possible. Oh, you want to return to Saya because, you know, to get some quickie quicks. <laughs> but thinking about the packed trains and crowded downtown streets between here and some saps my spirit. Catching the sight of a nearby bench, I sit down and close my eyes to this horrors of the world. I can't do anything about the stink or the noise, but at least I can calm my nerves enough to rest. I regained consciousness in the T-University Hospital Ward. The world was a dark as it is now. I had not yet recovered my sight, even though my eyes and optical nerves were undamaged. It must have been an after effect of the accident. Blindness was a shock, but now I know that my suffering when was then was nothing. After all, my senses of hearing, touch, taste, and smell were all fine at the time. Oh yeah, they changed. Even his taste changed. Not only his like eyesight has changed, his smell, his taste, like all his senses are like changed. I mean, even his hearing. 
The real horror began when my sight returned. The one small mercy was that I was able to come to terms with the accident and my neurosurgery while still blind. Um, I panicked when I first saw the nightmarish hospital and the blood-curdling shapes of the doctors and nurses, but I soon guessed the cause. It chills me to think of what have happened, what might have happened if I had recovered my sight along with my consciousness. Suddenly awakening in what can only be described as hell, I would no doubt have lost my mind instantly. Soon my disorder spread to the senses of touch, taste, and smell. As it turns out, sight exerts tremendous influence over the other four. The taste of my food, the feel of my bed sheets, the fragrance of my what, get well flowers, what? Everything that changed to damn! Holy shit, all became as unbearable foul as my eyes said they should be. Jesus Christ. Eventually, when even the doctor's voices became unrecognizable as human, I decided to kill myself. Whoa. I didn't believe for a second that I could live in this new world. I mean, I probably would have done the same thing, I'm not gonna lie. At least not until I met Saya. Okay, so we're getting a background check of how we met the girl. One night while thinking of a painless way to die, I found myself scumming, succumbing to sleep, drifting between the nightmarish in my dreams and the nightmare of reality, but I noticed her enter my room. The next thing I knew, there was a face staring down at me from next to my bed. This this face, no offense, but this face looks very um devilish, mister. Like this I don't know. This this just smells trouble. <laughs> the, uh, the face was not covered in pus or slime or earthworm-like feelers. Ew. It had smooth white cheeks, round eyes, a lovely little nose. All things I had never expected to see again. The face was that of a girl, undeniably human and positively glowing with beauty. I wonder if he sees her as human. Then what did the other see her as? I'm like kind of curious. <sighs> I sighed in admiration, savoring the first peace and joy since regaining my sight. She had not expected such a reaction, apparently. <laughs> she asked, looking at the clock, I saw that it was exactly three in the morning. No time for a young girl to be alone in the hospital. Perhaps she expected me to mistake her for a ghost. But I would not have cared if she had been a ghost. Either way, she was a godsend. I assumed that she was the daughter of a late shift doctor or another patient. It was unusual but not unthinkable for such a girl to be wandering around the hospital. There has to be some reason why he's in this mess. I don't even think it's because of the accident. I think someone put him succumb to this whole disease of like why his sight the way it is. I, I don't know because like, I don't know, when you get in the car crash it's like your sight just doesn't end up like this <laughs> like it's I'm, like i'm sorry it's just it's just very unrealistic here <laughs> that something had to have happened someone had to have drugged this man and put something inside of him i don't know i don't know what it is then again then again this is like a work of fiction so i can't really say nothing i mean why would he be scared i cried desperate to keep her from leaving it was only after she turned around that i realized i hadn't thought of what to say next her beautiful eyes drew me in, healing my soul to its core. With a white haze clouding my mind, I struggled to form a coherent sentence. No longer concerned with propriety, I let the words come as they willed. This man is desperate. Saya looked confused at first, but then she smiled like she just found a new toy. Her smile was brighter than my memories of the sun. Oh, yeah, that smile sounds devious. Not gonna lie, this smile is just really just I don't know. I don't trust this smile. <laughs> Look at the dude. The background's insane right now. I'm not gonna lie to you. 
そんなこと言い出したのあなたが初めて She said holding out her slender white hand No one's asked me anything like that before Ever so carefully as though catching snowflakes I placed my palm against hers I could feel her human warmth and the softness of her delicate fingers. She was there, just beyond the palm of my hand. Thinking back on the joyful tears I shed then, I know that this is the moment I was saved from my fate. That's depressing. That's actually sad. Huh? 他の人じゃダメなんだ僕事故にあってその後遺症らしいんだけど人が人の姿に見えないんだよ I don't even think it was a side effect I think someone just injected something into you that、uh, gave you this weird、uh, sight うーん本当に不思議な人あなたって面白い明日の夜もまた来ていい She said, wind, winding her fingers, winding her fingers gently around mine. Can I come back tomorrow night? <laughs> What are they gonna pork in the hospital too? Like, Jesus Christ, I mean. And so our rendezvous began. Sai came to my room every night at 3 a.m. 3 a.m., nigga? Skillfully taking advantage of the duty. Nurse's shift change. I was astonished to learn that she was living inside the hospital. <laughs> so she could just hide everywhere. Alright. She had been living with she had been living in the suburbs with her father, she told me, until one day he suddenly stopped coming home. I mean they better be living in the suburbs, like I mean don't doctors get paid a shit ton of money? <laughs> After she had tired of waiting, after she had tired of waiting, Saya had decided one night to sneak into the hospital where he worked. And there she lived for over two months, searching for his whereabouts all the while. What? She's been searching for her dad for two months? What the hell? Dude, who is this kid? She was a strange girl. On the one hand, she looked and acted like a child. On the other, she was remarkably self reliant and at times exhibited a sharp intelligence and deep knowledge that many may have found unsettling. I didn't care. Sai was the only other human in the world gone mad. Her existence meant far more to me than the standards of society. <laughs> Yeah, boy. That's actually sad. That's actually sad. That's actually そういう患者さんの言うことはみんな真に受けたりしないから。わお、this little bitch。なあ、she's an asshole。結局は悪い夢ってことで片付けられちゃうし。No, no。Oh no, bro。Hell no。Her confession reminded me that the hospital was famous for its ghost stories。Who would have imagined that there was a actual, real, impilishly。Roaming these hallways. Yeah, no, she girl, a real girl in Pilishing Lee roaming these hallways. Yeah, she's a little bitch. I'm about to get punched in the fucking face. <laughs> While her pranks were hardly praiseworthy, I couldn't bring myself to scold her for the very thing that had brought us together. Oh, well, I mean, he's happy because he's now able to see a human. <laughs> I don't know to lie to you, though. This low key makes him, like, I don't know, a little bit weird. Like, look at her. Like, she clearly looks rather 
young. You know what I mean? I don't know. You guys could just put two to two together. <laughs> I don't know. You shouldn't do it anymore. Will you come talk to me instead? Holy sh! Yo! <laughs> My nigga, is he good? <laughs> what the fuck? It looks like he got decapitated. I'm not gonna lie to you, but it's but it's just like it's like furniture. It's like cover. Like it's so fucking weird. With extreme care, I was able to conceal my sensory disorder. It was a glaringly obvious that the doctors had no way to cure me, and the fact that I had undergone a still experimental procedure made me even more cautious. As a medical student, it was easy for me to imagine how the doctors would react if they had discovered that I was exhibiting such unusual side effects. I was not about to become a guinea pig. A mere specimen to be examined with clinical detachment. And so I hid my discomfort and loathing behind a mask of normalcy, convincing the doctors that my any signs of stress were merely a result of hospitalization. I mean, he has to change a whole new career though, because, like, you can't be a doctor doing looking like this shit, you know? Sai was my support. Looking forward to her nightly visits gave me the strength to endure my daily torture. Hope can make an enormous difference in a patient's progress with the aid of my secret nurse. I recovered at a pace that I left the doctor stunned. On the last night before my release, I summoned my courage and asked her. You Otherwise, there was nothing keeping her there. The question took all the courage I had. え?家族はもういないから。部屋はいくらでも余ってる。人目を忍ぶような必要もないし、住み心地もそんなに悪くないんじゃないかと。I was too afraid to ask her what she thought of that, so I, just, I hastily offered a deal. Huh. So I said, looking a little bit embarrassed. Probably if he's not even there. だから警察とかは困るの。なるべくこっそりと探さなきゃいけないし。頑張るよ。どんなことだってやる。僕は。Unable to control myself, I finally spoke the truth. Sayato,離れたくないんだ。Oh, he started to love her. <laughs> At first, she looked bewildered, but after a few moments of silence, she said. That night she left my room earlier than usual. On the day of my release, I managed to smile as respected the hideous, foul smelling celebrity vocate. The flesh beast calling themselves Koji, Omi, and Yo came to pick me up, though they had come to see me many times during my stay and never got easier to see my friends change so horribly. Yeah, that's gotta be terrible. My sudden tears of despair drew suspicion, but I managed to explain them away as tears of joy. While we walked to Koji's car, I looked desperately for Saya amid grotesque sensory, a scenic grotesque scenery. Even as we drove away, I kept watching the hostel fade into the distance, praying for a last glimmer of hope. But Sai never appeared. Damn. Oh well. After Koji and the others dropped me off, I paused a while to regard my surroundings. I had lived my entire life on this block, in this house. There was no other place that I could call home. But nothing was as I remembered. 
As I walked up to the path of the front door and took in the yard where I had spent my childhood, I could feel those memories being defiled by the twisted, festering shapes around me. Inside the house, I found nothing familiar, nothing to offer me comfort and warmth. What I had once called home was now a whole other world. Damn, that's depressing, bro. I whispered with a smile of self-pity. There was one last stop to make, one last nail to hammer into my coffin. His parents' grave? I stepped into the room that had cradled me from childhood. The walls were prepared. The walls were papered with human entrails. Damn. The bed had bed. The bed entangled mass of worm flesh. Holy shit! But none of them that mattered. There, curled up on the bed like an abandoned cat, was Saya. As I stood there in shock, she looked up at me, and a tiny, weak voice said. <laughs> I responded by sweeping her into my arms, embracing her tightly so that she would not escape. So I did not resist. As she arrives at the Saga Saga house, Omi first takes a deep breath to calm herself. Her anger does not vanish entirely, of course, but at least now she can hear herself think. Oh, wait, so we just, we're now in the present now, we're not in the past anymore. Oh shit, she's pissed. Oh yeah, cause about Yo, cause how he treated Yo. Oh, she's about to go down. She's about to go down. While waiting for a response from the intercom, she looks over the patch of yard that she can see from the outside gate. Even Omi isn't normally one to complain about others people's housekeeping but this is going too far the grass is going wild and there are piles of dead leaves scattered everywhere it doesn't just look unintended it looks like an uninhabited ruin it's still light out but every window has its storm shutters tightly sealed <sighs> Omi guesses that they've been closed since morning what kind of life is Funeri living? Even if he's leaving, living alone, he can't neglect his housework forever. And it's just her imagination, or does something stink like rotten meat? It couldn't be coming from the yard, could it? There's still no response, so she presses the buzzer a second time, and a third and a fourth. Finally, after this has gone over over 10 minutes, Omi loses her patience and opens the cover of the intercom. As she expected, the power has been disconnected. Perhaps Funamori has a good reason for shutting out the world, but Omi can only see it as a lack of respect for others. Her anger rekindled. She pushes the gate open and stomps through the yard to the front door. This bitch got anger issues. <laughs> Given the state of the intercom, uh, she doubts that Funamori, Funamori will respond to a knock. So Omi decides to just open the door and go in sh shouting. And if the door is locked, she'll just have to... Oh, she's gonna open it? I think I'm just gonna call Futamori for now on. Surprisingly, the doorknob turns easily in her hand. In the enraged Omi... Ami? Is her name Ami or Omi? I think it's Ami. Ami finds herself throwing the door open wider than she intended. Her nostrils are instantly assaulted by choking stench. <laughs> Ami S stands prohibited on the threshold, the cowbell hanging, hanging on the inside of the door chimes loudly. A moment later. <laughs> Ami can't believe her ears. The voice she just heard could not have been human. It is in tight in Tenacious were too complex for any animal she can imagine. What? She calls out to the end of the hallway from which the voice came. There's no response. Instead, she hears the sound of something soft and wet flopping its way deeper into the house. <laughs> Finding it difficult to place a meaningful image to the voice she just heard, 
Ami stares blank blankly at the empty, visible. There's nothing there. Not even Finamori shoes. Which can only mean that he's still outside somewhere, wearing them. The house should be empty. But then what was this voice just now? Her anger has vanished, as it were never there. Nevertheless, Ami sets foot into the hallway, leaving the door open so that the cowbell won't ring. The floor creaks, sending her nerves on edge. Ami isn't sure why she's acting like a burglar, <laughs> but something tells her to make as little noise as possible. The potency of the stink inside of the house makes the whiff she caught outside pale in comparison is sickening, like rotten fish guts. Oh! Oh yeah, rotten fish guts is gross. Has food been left to spoil in the kitchen? She hears a blubbing sound up ahead. Stepping gingerly on the creaking floorboards, Ami makes her way to the end of the hallway. She finds the rooms to both sides of her, one lit, the other dark, and chooses to look into the lit room. It's a kitchen lit by what must be the only window on the house not covered by a storm shutter. The sound she heard was the pot boiling on the stove and on the chopping board next to it lie a butcher's knife and some half-diced carrots. A perfectly normal household scene, with the light of the setting, sun making everything the color of decomposing fruit? Something is wrong. Who was cooking here? Where did they go? Only cause regretting it immediately as she realizes that her voice is shaking. What is that noise? As her words echo vainly through the silent house, she begins to feel foolish and defenseless. Oh, she gulped. She's like, Ugh. oh, hell no. Nah. Suddenly, she feels something cold seeping through her pantyhose. What? She timidly reaches down to touch her feet. Her fingertips come away. What the hell? Come away covered with a vicious olive green slime like the filthy water from a tank long clogged with algae and dead fish the whole floor is covered with it what it must be the source of the stench i mean now wishes that she had worn her shoes inside manners be damned what the hell when she looks back ruefully the way she came she realizes that her current position is not visible from the entrance this kitchen must be where that strange voice came from the next room is probably the den, as she expected from the closed storm shutters. It's pitch black inside. Omi wants nothing more than to flee this house, but that would mean turning her back to the darkness, and that she simply cannot bring herself to do. Moved by some irrational compulsion, Omi sets foot into the den. It is too dark to see anything, and the stink is far worse than before. Holy fuck, dude, what? She slides her hand along the wall, feeling for the light switch, finding it much sooner than she expected. She flips it on like it's her last home. Oh, that's what it looks like to her? In the real world? Oh, oh wow. The colors. The colors. So many colors. The purple of entrails, the brown of rotten meat, the crimson of fresh blood. The yellow fat, these colors, and more than cannot be described, cover every inch of the room. In mating array, the colors say all that needs to be said about the painter's hatred, malice, and insanity. <laughs> Ami's legs give out from the shock, sending her to the floor. Slime immediately soaks through her jeans, its cold and tender ills creeping up her legs and crotch and her neck. Her hand flies to her neck, where it is greeted by another drop of chili slime. Above her, something is dripping down on her head. What? Making perhaps the worst decision of her life, Ami looks up. The predator clinging to the ceiling, poised to leap upon its prey. She sees it in every detail. What the hell? 
Her mouth and nose are sealed before she can scream, and her belly is torn open as something enters to feast on her innards. But by the time she feels any of this, Omi has already gone mad. What? Wait, wait, was that Saya? Did Saya do that? I bit the bullet and tried to take the train, but the rush hour crowds were so bad that I had to get off halfway, get off halfway and walk. I'm running pretty late. Is Saya worried? I hope she's not mad. Dude, I think Saya just fucking murdered your friend. <laughs> when I entered the yard, I realized that the front door has been left wide open. Life from the living room is seeping out into the hallway, and I hear that sounds like someone smacking their lips. There's also a tantalizing fragrance in the air. Fragrance? Is it Saya? I consider calling out to her, but decide to enter in silence instead. No wonder he can't feel all this weird shit, because all his senses and everything have changed. Something smells strange. Though not unpleasant, the aroma is quite soothing, in fact. It is reminded of Saya's hair. So the slime reminds him of, like, the Saya's hair? At first, I am surprised by what I see in the living room. Wait, so he sees this too? The floor is covered with what looks to be some kind of grass. Probably the source of the herb-like smell. And there are fruit or veggie-like Balls of varying size scattered everywhere. Saya. Nah, bro. Bro, Sai was eating somebody. What? Nah, I feel like this whole thing had to be set up. This must, this must be like some experiment. I feel like someone's watching in the background and they're just like, oh my god, this experiment is going really well. Like, I feel like this was planned somehow. I don't know. Saya. <laughs> Saya turns around, her eyes wide with surprise. She then looks away, sheepishly like a child caught at some prank. I mean, technically, he doesn't even know that she's eating her for his his one of his friends and i don't think i don't even think he would really care anymore since he didn't want to be their friends anymore but this this is like wild <laughs> so flustered that i suddenly feel bad for sneaking up on her remember that she has never eaten in front of me before i realized that she must be quite embarrassed My nigga, what? Did you just commit cannibalism? There's no fucking way, dude. There's no way. This... This is fucked. <laughs> I scoop up the closest fruit thing and pop it in my mouth, ignoring size attempt to wave me off. Yeah, cause he's like, oh, you're gonna eat your own friend, like... You're committing cannibalism right now. That's a strange texture, soft and pliable, like a peach or a pear. Wait, so humans taste good to him? I I think I'm actually gonna be sick. I fuck, dude. Bite into wait, like a pear, or when I bite into it with my back teeth, I. Oh, he put that whole thing in his mouth? Oh, Ashton juice fills my mouth. Oh my, oh, fuck. Combined with a sharp, strong fragrance, it's like unlike anything I've ever tasted. What the hell? Wait, so what is this? 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 What is what the fuck? I pick up a different lump, this one consisting of fruity flesh around a hardcore. Tearing a chunk off in my mouth, I find that it has a similar taste to the last one. Oh. My. Oh. 
Oh, she's worried because she's like, oh yeah, you're like eating your own friend. Like, this is not normal. Maybe she, yeah, you know what? Maybe she's not even a part of this whole plan thing. I don't know. Like, maybe she just really was just like, damn, like, this is, this is not normal. Mm. Ooh, shit. This is, um... At first, Saya looks dumbstruck, but then she bursts out laughing. <laughs> Bro, are they about to turn into like serial killers? <laughs> like, are they about to like, just capture humans just for food? This is gross. This is so fucked. I feel like a lot of things are gonna go wrong with this. Oh, so this she's been murdering humans. There's an impressive nature preserve into preserve not too far from here. I've never heard about fruits like these growing there, but well of course they only look like fruits to me. They're really something else. So I seems happy. I'm happy too, of course. Eating with someone is much more fun than eating alone, and it makes the food taste better too. Dude, once he finds out it's gonna be so fucked up. You know what's crazy, bro? What if he gets everything back? I feel that little by little. I'm starting to regain the joy of living. Saya will guide me. With her, I can live on. I'm like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Two scary stories, hospital edition. Chapter 4, The Monster in the Hospital. A medical student relates his shocking experiences. Will you believe him or not? Wait a minute. So was she eating people in the hospital? So that's why she was going to all the hospitals, because she was eating people. And she was going for more of the, the mentally insane. That's fucked! Nah, that's actually fucked. That's fucked. No, that's crazy. So she was going for disabled motherfuckers and just eating them. Do you know how f This game might be the worst visual novel I've ever played. <laughs> I, that's it, dude, that's fucked. No, that's terrible. That's terrible. Okay, will you believe him or not? Strange things started happening at the hospital around the end of this last spring. It began with the patients waking up in the middle of the night, screaming. They all spoke of terrifying nightmares, and many of them had to be sedated. Some patients even transferred to other hospitals because of it. The weird thing was that they all had exactly the same dream. A dream about some horribly disgusting monster staring down at them from their bedside. That was Saya. So Saya's the monster. So that's not her true form. So that's what he sees in her. But the really strange stuff stared. The, but the really strange stuff started happening after that. There must be a lot of stray cats around campus looking for scraps from the students. One day, the cats suddenly disappeared, and it wasn't that they stopped coming. It was more like they vanished from the area entirely. Oh, so she was eating cats too. And then people stopped walking their dogs around. According to rumors, the dogs were refusing to go anywhere near the, ha the school. Because <laughs> they know they get their ass ate up. Eventually, things started going missing in the hospital. Organs to be precise. Oh, she was eating people, dude. Transplant organs kept disappearing from storage. People came close to losing their jobs over it. And it wasn't just two or three times that it happened. They tried to keep it from the students, but we heard it was a lot worse than that. People started saying that there was something living in the hospital. The janitors would find strange messes that could only have been made in the middle of the night. Traces of something that had crawled down the hallway or weird stains caused by something dripping through the ceiling. The late shift nurses talked about hearing strange noises on the same nights that patients woke screaming. There's one last story, one you can never mention inside the hospital. One day, the op streaks department went crazy upstairs <clears throat> one day the upstairs department went crazy they said that in a newborn had disappeared in the night nah she ate babies that's insane if that were true the police would have come in come in and 
come, the police would have come and it would have been all over the news. But they said the big shots managed to make it all go away. It's just a rumor, of course. These strange incidents suddenly stopped toward the end of summer. Now there are almost no patients complaining of nightmares and the cats have started coming back to campus. But still, what happened in the hospital that summer? Even now, just thinking about it gives me the creeps. Monica, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> oh, they're trying to call Ami. This is the third day in a row that they haven't been able to get in touch with Ami. There's no sign that she returned to her apartment. And even her family doesn't know anything. Her parents have already filed a missing person report. まあ、あいつのことだからな。何事もなかったみたいに、ひょっこり顔出しそうな気もするんだが。Yo hasn't seen Funamori since then. Funamori hasn't made any effort to approach her or Koji. Four people used to meet in this cafeteria between classes, but now there are only two. Yeah. Koji answers evasively. It's a lie, of course. Koji shows where Ami planned to go that evening, but he doesn't want to bring Funamori up in front of Yo. Yeah, so, so he already knows that he tried to go to Funamori's house. Is he gonna try to go? Oh, he's probably gonna find out what the fuck happened. Their awkward silence is mercifully broken by the bells signaling the start of the next period. Oh, shit. <laughs> Oh fuck, unless Koji's mistaken, Yo is supposed to have class next period too, but she just sits there, staring off into space. Unable to come up with anything to say, she leaves the cafeteria reluctantly. Both Omi's disappearance and Yo's depression worry Koji, and both problems lead back to the exact same place. <laughs> When Ami went missing, the first thing he did was question Funamori after all. The last time he'd seen her was just before she stormed off to give Funamori a piece of her mind. Funamori responded with unequivocal denial and acted like he hadn't the slightest idea of why Ami would have gone to see him. Perhaps that was the only natural as he was unaware that Ami and Koji had witnessed him reduce Yo to tears. Did Ami even make it to Funamori's house? She had been riding a wave of emotion then when she left and might have calmed down and changed her mind halfway there? Or perhaps she ran into trouble on the way. Koji concluded or more accurately convinced himself that one of these possibilities was the truth, subconsciously denying the one remaining possibility that Funamori was lying, that he had met Ami, and was involved with her disappearance. One question by the police, Koji told the truth about Ami's destination only up to the train station, maintaining that he had no idea where she planned to go after that. He wanted to co cooperate with the search, of course, but Ami couldn't have made it to Funamori's house. Funamori said so himself, didn't he? In that case, he told the police everything that he needed to know. Oh my god. If they dude, if they go to his house, like they're they're instantly gonna know that there's something wrong with that house. Oh my god. Not wanting to get the still fragile Finamori involved, he forced himself to accept his filmsy logic. Damn, there are there are the, the freaking narrators calling fucking Koji weak as hell. <laughs> Like, they're calling him a bitch, bro. The conf but the conflict was built up inside of him without his notice, leaving unanswered suspicion to fester in his mind. Koji's in deep thought, paying no attention to his surroundings, but perhaps that is what allows him to catch sight of his friends back through the crowd of miling students. Dude, if freaking- if, if they- if the police go inside that house, 
he's instantly going to jail. Like, they're already just like, oh, cannibalism. You ate everyone. Like, because she's... So for what I'm noticing, from what I'm guessing, the reason why the side doesn't even eat the food is because it doesn't taste good to her. And instead, it goes after humans because that's what tastes good to her. So he must have, like, caught some, like, weird alien disease or some shit. I don't know. Just the same as, like... He has, like, he has, like, some same genes and Sai or whatever. Like, he has to have, like, some, most of her traits or some shit. I don't, I don't even fucking know. Like, this shit's so fucking weird. Um, Koji's in deep thought, paying no attention to his surroundings, but perhaps that is what allows him to catch sight of his friend's bag through the crowd, miling and suited. <sighs> through the crowd of miling students. At first, Koji assumes that he's headed to the lecture hall, but it soon appears that he is intended. He is said going home. Strange. Medical students have required courses in the afternoon. Though he is initially surprised, Koji's hesitation lasts for only a second. He follows his friend, taking taking care to stay far enough and behind that he won't be noticed. Funimori wasn't going home, as become obvious when he boarded a train heading in the opposite direction. Koji's next guess was that he was going to see his doctor at the T-University Hospital, but Funimori rode straight through close to the station. Where is he going? At first, Koji felt ashamed for tailing his friend like this, but his conscience fell silent as Funimori's actions grew more mysterious. The stranger, I guess, the closer Koji feels to so discovering the truth behind Finamori's sudden transformation, any knowledge would be welcome, no matter how slight. True. Even Koji is beginning to think that there must be more behind Finamori's change than the accident alone. He wants a more satisfying answer, one that will help him decide whether Finamori's can still be trusted. Honestly, bro, it's just. If I were you, bro, I wouldn't just be his friend anymore at all. I fuck the answer, bro. <laughs> I I would want no part of that. Furumori gets off a a small station in a nondescript suburb of Tokyo. Koji follows, trying not to lose sight of him amid the other disembarking passengers. The area is quite desolate, with only a small bookstore, a convenience store, and a market in front of the station, it is easy for Koji to keep Funimori in view. This neighborhood was carved out of Fuji foothills, and here and there remain steep inclines and wooded areas that escaped assimilation. Koji is amazed that such a quiet place exists less than an hour of central Tokyo. Uh, before long, Funimori reaches a house without ringing the bell or even knocking. He opens the door and vanishes inside, leaving Koji to wonder how Funimori can treat the house as his own. After waiting to see if Funimori comes back out, Koji approaches the gate and checks the nameplate. Oga, it reads, Koji has never re heard of anyone by that name among Funimori's acquaintances. Next, his attention is drawn to the thick wad of leaflets sticking out of the mail slot. This, coupled with the general dilapidated, dilapidated, dilapidated feel of the place, suggests that it has been abandoned for some time. A small playground about two blocks away provides an adequate vantage point from which to watch the front of the Oga. Ogai home of fortunate fortunately it does not appear to be sort of house that has a rear exit Koji settles down on a bench to begin his stakeout I should have brought some smokes <laughs> he's like man I should have been smoking one hour passes and then among others but there um, um, and then all right one hour passes and another but there remains no sign of movement around the Ogai residence. Soon, twilight settles upon the neighborhood. After Koji's one pack of cigarettes runs out, the stakeout becomes a battle against mounting impatience. He kills time by re redialing Ami on his cell and sending her short text messages, but his efforts are futile, as he knew they would be. 
When the sky begins to turn deep blue and the street lights come on, Funamori finally emerges from the house and heads back towards the station with the same hurried stride. Hurried stride? After some brief consideration, Koji decides that right, right, right now, decides right now, investigating the house is more important than tailing Funamori. He rings the doorbell just to make sure. After receiving the expected silence in response, he checks to make sure no one is watched and turns the doorknob. The doorknob is not locked. And when he enters the house, stale air is thick and mold and dust fills Koji's nostrils. It is unmistakable smell of a house that has long lain and touched. There is also a faint hint of something else in the air. something. Resident of damp sewers and fetid cinterns. There's also a faint hint of something else in the well, I gotta, The moment he enters the house, stale air thick with mold and dust fills Koji's nostrils. It is unmistakable smell of a house that has long lain untouched. There is also a faint hint of something else in the air. Something reminiscent of damp sewers and fetid cinterns and flipping the light switch does nothing. Power must be cut off. Koji uses his cigarette lighter to illuminate the immediate area and the what right, Koji uses his cigarette lighter to illuminate the immediate area and the thick dust covering the floor. He sees several brand new trails of footprints that could only have been made by shoes from the Moris. Koji decides to follow suit and dispense with courtesy. He enters with his shoes on, the lighters flickering. Flame pushes back and deathly silence and gloom of the house. Jesus Christ, dude, what the fuck is this game? The lighter's flickering flame. Oh, I already read that. Koji is surprised to see evidence of life remaining. Everything from furniture to tableware and appliances, nothing seems to be missing. The thickness of dust suggests that the house has been empty for several months, which means that the owner must have left while left with little more than the clothes on his back could he have gone on a long vacation the calendar the is still turned to april empty and silent yet still exhibiting signs of life that was once lived there the house reminds koji of a passenger ship entombed at the bottom of the sea in the graveyard like quiet, a sinister thought suddenly enters his mind. No one is living here, but that does not have to mean the owner left. Maybe he was murdered, and his rotting corpse is right under Koji's feet. That's oof. That could be true. He finds himself wanting a stronger light. A flashlight in his hand would make him feel much better. Koji follows Funamori's footsteps to the second floor, where he begins to cast the scent of paper and stale air. It is the smell of old books, instantly, re instantly recognizable to anyone who has worked in the antique bookstore or library. The first room on the second floor turns out to be a study. It is towering shelves packed with such a vast number of books that Koji fears for the stability of the floor. As a medical student himself, he is able to discern at a glance that this study belongs to a medical professional and a high level one at that. Judging by the content of the books, a some some morgus board some morgus board, what the fuck is that? Of technical volumes far beyond a simple student's understanding. The owner's interests lie more with medical research than the clinical practice. <clears throat> Furthermore, he must have spent most of his time here. The scattered dust suggests that he was searching for something, and the contents of desk drawers are an obvious disarray. So he was he looking for a cure? For his like disease? Wait, is he gonna find out what his disease is? A small pile of books stacked on the side table catches his eye. Being next to the desk, they must have been the most frequently read. Their nature could shed some light on the character of the person who worked here. Koji frowns as he examines the three books. These aren't scientific texts like the rest, but old leather bound 
western tomes like the sword you would find in a rare bookstore. The titles are meaningless too. to him. The titles are meaningless to him. Trade Des Schiffers appears to concern somatics, but ours and Magna in Ultima is some kind of treatise on the definition. And then there's the Voyage man manuscript, which looks like some sort of picture book. When he pages, when he pages through it, he finds the text utterly incomprehensible. Maybe it's some kind of cipher. Whatever they are, they clearly have nothing to do with medicine, refuting Koji's earlier guess that this Ogai was a doctor. Oh, that's the dad. So he was searching for Saya's dad. Oh boy. Looking down, Koji suddenly notices the glint of something black and metallic underneath the air. The chair? <clears throat> A pocket sized flashlight quite out of place among all of these dusty books. Furthermore, he must have brought in. Brought it in? With relief, Koji exchanges his flashlighter for the flashlight. Its tiny body emits a powerful light beam that casts away the darkness. His courage restored it, he decided to explore the rest of the house. Hmm? Koji notices something strange, something that was not visible in the lighter's weak flame. The slime. The slime? Is that what they're calling the flesh? The slime? <laughs> Dark, oily strains are everywhere. The stains are specifically thick around the doorknobs and stare binister like someone grasps them with hands wrapped in greasy cloth. Ooh. Looking closer, he sees places where slime was splashed low on the walls, almost as if a wet mop was run violently, violently across the floor. <clears throat> Could Ogai have made these marks? If so, how? Koji begins to feel sick as he imagines a man shambling through the house with slime dripping from his body. Finding the bedroom next to the study, Koji checks the closet on a hunch. He discovers two empty suitcases, not what one would have leave behind. Not what one would leave behind when going on a long vacation. A sudden chill runs through him. Whoever was living here is still somewhere inside the house. Oh shit, so he knows, okay, so there's a dead body. Uh, so the doctor might be dead. Suppressing the urge to flee, Koji goes back to downstairs to check the first floor. If he finds a corpse, he'll have to call the police right away. He might get away with trespassing if he reports it at first, but if they find the body later, it'll awfully be hard explaining his footprints, his fingerprints all over the house. Oh shit. Then they're gonna have to blame Funamori. The flashlight reveals the den to be covered in even more slime than the rest of the house. The sofa looks as though it was degraded from the bottom of a swamp. In the kitchen, Koji takes one look at the sink and decides not to get any closer. He doesn't want any more fuel for his imagination. He reaches the door to the bathroom. A common scene from TV dramas flashes through his head, a body with slit wrists floating in a bathtub full of water. And wasn't there a movie where a hitman disposes of his victim in a bathtub filled with I Eli Isle or Lee? I don't know what the hell that means. Koji braces himself for the worst and opens the door slowly, then shines his light into the ceramic bathtub that appears from the darkness like a white ghost. Bones? A mountain of bones. Black with dry flesh and blood. Koji puts one hand against the wall to steady himself as his legs threaten to buckle. Something is wrong. He realizes as he tries to desperately get his thoughts in order. The bones are too small, and there are too many of them. They are human. After taking several deep breaths to calm himself, Koji enters the bathroom and examines the tub. 
The bones are piled atop each other like fallen leaves. They appear to be from small animals, perhaps cats or dogs. Even so, the quantity is mind-boggling. How many bodies would it take to proceed, produce this many bones? The bones have all been separated from one another, so it doesn't look like bodies were just thrown into the tub and left to rot. Each bone is covered with deep grooves, marks left by teeth biting through the flesh. Oh, these motherfuckers were eating these people. Koji's sanity won't let him consider the possibility that a human could have done this. The owner of this house must have kept some sort of carnivorous animal as a pet. Giving it the bones of small animals to eat and disposing of the remains in the bathtub. Nah, bro, those are humans. Or maybe dogs. Some of them are dogs and cats, too. But why not dispose of the leftovers properly? They could have just been thrown out with the garbage, or was there something keeping him from leaving the house? The relief Koji felt when he realized the bones weren't human is once again under attack. In the first place, what the hell was Finamori doing here? Koji. Oh shit, he just appeared, nigga? <gasps> Koji rolls around his light, revealing Funamori's expressionless face. <laughs> nigga, you're trespassing too, bitch. Uh, Koji, bar but Koji replies, barely managing to speak over the pounding of his heart. Funamori pushes past Koji and looks into the bathtub. He doesn't even flinch at the sight of the bones. A friend lives here? Koji doesn't want to believe that the old friendly Funamori could have had contact with the denizens of this house. I heard my life. Oh boy. Oi, Fuminori! Koji runs after Fuminori. His heart is finally beating normally again. Most likely. Sitting in the entrance, Fuminori glares coldly at Koji over his shoulder. The utter lack of emotion in his eyes gives Koji pause. Well, of course I did. <sighs> Koji swallows. What can he say? So you know I'm a Nido to Yara Nai de Moraitai. Ah. Fudumori walks away without another word, leaving Koji alone in the entrance. Up until this very moment, concern for his friend was still at the far front of his mind. Now, however, that concern is swiftly giving away to a growing sense of dread. Yeah, he's just some, about to be in some deep shit. <laughs> Does Funimori he know he knew no longer exist? Was the person who just stared Koji down an imposter wearing Funimori's skin? Koji has begun to believe that it might be so. All right, man, I'm gonna stop here for today because like it's getting late. It's like almost 10 o'clock right now. <laughs> so it has come to find out that Funimori has been eating humans with this girl as well named Saya. If it is even like an actual girl, it it's most likely an alien. That's her true form. Um, I feel like he's definitely gonna go to jail because like, bro, like this shit is just crazy. But now we know that her true form is not of a human. It's like some type of alien I don't know, like, it's just some predator predator thing. It's just got dark. And, like, dude, the girl, this girl, bro, was eating people in the hospital, dog. Like, the like, bro. Even the babies, bro. The babies? <laughs> the babies. <laughs> That's just crazy. And the mentally insane. But anyways, I'm gonna get out of here. I'm gonna see y'all later. Click the like button and the bellification. What do y'all think of this game? I, this is just, like, messed up visual novel for me. I'll see y'all later. Praise.